Tonight I have a unique message uh, in Bible prophecy. The title is Blessed are the Dead Which Die in the Lord. Tonight we're going to talk about death. And you say, Brother Perkins, ooh, man, death, man. Why are you talking about death? Well, we're going to see some amazing things based on scripture about, about death. But the key, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. Uh, the problem is not dying. The problem is, is, is how you die. Um, and the problem is being ready for when you cross over that door. You know, if the rapture doesn't take place, uh, you know, within the next, you know, season or whatever, I mean, all of us will face the door of death. And the key to it is being ready for that door when you cross. Uh, I want to uh, so start with a verse here. Let me do this first. I want to start with prayer. Bow your hearts as we ask the Lord to bless. Father, we love you. We thank you again for this wonderful time of study. And again, I just ask, Lord, breathe afresh on the word tonight. Uh, touch, uh, touch this message, oh God. Give us understanding, dear God, about, about this subject called death, about the, about the end times related to it. Lord, help us understand where we can, we can communicate this message to a lost world uh, that don't know you. And Lord, we thank you and we give you all the honor and all the glory tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus uh, quoted, uh, uh, made a statement in John chapter 11, verse 25. Jesus said unto her, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. The life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And we know here he's talking about spiritual death. He said, though he's dead, if you believe in him, you'll have life. You have eternal life. So tonight we're going to look at that. We're going to look at spiritual life versus uh, physical physical life and, and death, and we'll see some amazing things. I'm going to go through the chart, and we're going we're gonna to deal with a number of things. We're going to end up even with the, de dealing with the judgment of the unredeemed when they are resurrected at the end. What's going to happen to the unbeliever uh, uh, after, after death? Now, this is a picture of Arlington Cemetery, and I found out something amazing today, that to date right now there are over 400,000 people buried in Arlington National Cemetery. Can you imagine that? 400,000 people are in eternity that are buried right here. And, you know, something about a funeral and a graveyard, and again, as a preacher, you know, that's one thing I don't like. I love doing weddings. I love doing baby showers. But funerals is not, not something I really like to do, but I have to do it. And um, one thing about funerals and, 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 and death, death make all men common and equal. Uh, in this graveyard here, you got generals, you got four-star generals, you got five-star, I mean, you got just all uh, stratus of life that are represented. You have privates there. You have just average people that are there. Death makes all men common and equal. Uh, it doesn't matter, saints, what you have achieved in life. Uh, when you cross that, that door of death, you better be ready for it. Uh, all your success, all of your success means nothing. Um, in the book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse number 13, John wrote here, he says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. Henceforth, yea, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Again, he says, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. That's the blessing. That's, that's the key uh, in dying. Now, as a topical teacher, I like to deal with topics, so we're going to look at what is spiritual death We'll see what is physical death. Uh, we'll look at the death of a Christian. We'll also look at the death of an unbeliever. Then we see the end result of, of them both. What's going to happen to both, to the Christian and to the unbeliever? And then I'm going to answer three questions uh, about death. These are questions that I get all the time about death. And I'm going to answer them uh, you know, from, you know, from the scriptures, and I think it's going to really help us. But let's look at the screen here. We, we have a, we, we're in a culture now that is obsessed with death. Uh, people don't realize. I mean, everywhere you go, I mean, you see skulls everywhere. I mean, people just look at, I mean, there's, there's death everywhere. They, they have marketed death so much. Uh, bow ties. I mean, everywhere you go, uh, there's death. This is a purse. Look at all the skulls on it. Uh, death. I mean, they're marketing death, and people don't realize, you know, what they're doing. Uh, this is a hand, some some handwear. Uh, death. People don't realize it. You know, death is an enemy of Christ. The Bible says it's an enemy of God. My wife and I, we were in a, we were traveling, teaching somewhere. I went to this store, and they had some. I think it was Ed Hardy uh, product, and uh, it was all this death stuff, all this death stuff. And I told the lady, I said, "Ma'am, I said, uh, what is it with this obsession with death?" She said, "I love it." I love the skulls. I said, I love it all. I said, ma'am, do you realize that that represents death? And the Bible said that death is an enemy of Christ. Now, saints, I'm in the fragrance, fragrance department. You know what I mean? 
she wasn't expecting a sermon right there, you know. Uh, and she said, what? She said, I never thought about that. I said, you know, the Bible said that death is an enemy and that it will be the last enemy that Christ will destroy. Look at the screen. Uh, uh, they, they have they, people, look at the wedding band. Death, skull, don't realize that it's an enemy. Death is, not, death is not our friend. The death angel, he's not our friend. The scripture says here in, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 24 through 26, this is dealing with the end. Once Christ has, has come to the end uh, and he steps into, he says, then cometh the end when he, Jesus, shall have delivered up the kingdom of God, even the Father, when he have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he, Jesus, must reign till he put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Death is an enemy. Death is going to be destroyed. But we have a culture that has embraced death and don't realize that, you know, death is a vehicle into, into the eternal world. And you better be ready for eternity because, uh, you know, people have embraced it and they think it's just fun. Oh, no, it's an enemy. And God's going to deal with that enemy. Let's go a little further. What is spiritual death? I want to give you a little brief definition. Spiritual death, is, spiritual death is defined as being void of the life of God, of the Zoe life of God. Uh, a spiritual death is a separation from God, a break in relationship with God as a result of sin, uh, being dead in sins. As a result of this death, certain bodily death will follow, which will result in total separation, body, soul, and spirit, from God in the eternal judgment. You know what I'm saying? Death was never a part of God's will to touch human humanity. If Father Adam, Father Adam had never sinned, death would have never touched us. But as a result of Father Adam's sin, death touched us. And, and as a result of it, you know, it, was, it, it happened as a result of sin. Now, again, how did it occur? How did it come? Well, to look at that, we got to go back to the book of uh, Genesis and go back to the Garden of Eden. So we're, we're going to look at a few verses here in Genesis chapter 2, verses, uh, verses uh, 15 through uh, 17. Here, uh, God commanded Adam and Eve not to eat of the tree of life, and he told them if they did, uh, something was going to happen to them. In verse 17, he says, But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Adam and Eve was commanded not to eat of the tree of life. He said, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean sorry, not of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Uh, if they would, God said, you, you're going to die. And as a result, as the story unfolds, Adam and Eve disobeyed God by eating of the forbidden tree, and death entered into man. Now, at the very moment, man did not physically die, but he died spiritually as a result of this spiritual death. He would later experience physical death. Because of Adam, every human son and daughter who would be born of a man would experience sp uh, spiritual death as their curse. And again, it says, because of Adam, Father Adam's disobedience, death entered into man. Uh, the Bible says it entered into us through uh, Adam. Uh, and then God said, when you eat of this tree, Adam, you're going to die. He didn't die physically right away, but he did eventually die. Uh, death touched him. Uh, the enemy entered into humanity. Look at the verse here in Romans chapter 5, verse 12. The Bible says here, Wherefore, as by one man, as Adam, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Look at uh, Ephesians 2, verse 1. It says, And you have he quickened, Jesus, who were dead in trespasses and sin. Because of Adam's sin, we were dead. And that came because of our forefather, Adam. But because of what Christ has done, the Bible says he has quickened us and made us alive. We're born again today because of what, uh, what Christ has done. Look at this one, Ephesians 4, verse 18. He said, having the understanding, uh, having uh, their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that was in them. See, there was a time in our life, saints, that we were alienated from the Zoe life of God. It was because of Adam's sin. Uh, Adam really plunged us into a, a very, a very dangerous situation. Uh, the Bible said we were born in sin. Death uh, entered into mankind. Look at this one, Ephesians 2, verse number 5. Even when we were dead in sins, have, uh, have quickened us together with Christ. 
By grace you are saved. We were dead in sin, but Christ have quickened us. He's made us alive. We're born again. We re, we are regenerated. But listen, if you're not born again, you're still dead in your sins. And again, it happened. This spiritual death happened as a result of Father Adam. Look at this one. Romans chapter 8, verse number 10. It says, if and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. And again, I'm going to deal with some, uh, some, some areas in reference to the resurrection. Because again, even though uh, Christ has given us life now, this, this body still uh, has a curse in it. And what's going to happen at the resurrection or at the time of the rapture, uh, every born again believer will be, will, will be raised and glorified. You'll be changed from mortal to immortality. Uh, we will no longer have the sentence of death in our flesh ever again. Uh, Jesus Christ paid the price to give us that type of redemption, and we're going to see that. But again, Adam, Father Adam plunged us into a very, very bad situation. Look at this one, Colossians chapter 2, verse 13. He says, and, and you being dead in your sins... And the uncircumcision of your flesh have he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all your trespasses. See, this is one reason why it is, it is important that you, you become born again. Uh, you, you become regenerated in Christ because what Christ has done, he's given us life again. Adam uh, experienced separation from God. Christ brought life, brought connection, reconciliation back to God. And today we now are, are the sons and daughters of God. Look at this last one here in Psalms 51, 5. He said, behold, the psalmist wrote, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Now, again, all of this happened as a result of Father Adam disobeying God, eating of the tree, and then spiritual death entering into his being. And again, as a result of the spiritual death, physical death has touched every one of us. Now, what is physical death? Now, we know what it is, but let me define physical death for you. Physical death, plain and simple, is when the spirit and soul of man leaves his body. After the spirit of man departs, his, uh, the physical body is left behind to be buried by his family. We must understand that if Adam had never sinned, mankind would have never experienced death. Because of Adam's uh, sin... Physical death was allowed to touch humanity. Think about this, saints. If Father, Father Adam had never sinned, guess where Father Adam would be today? He would be right here upon planet Earth today. We would all know Father Adam if he had never sinned. But as a result of it, the death sentence went into his, went into his being, and therefore, as the seed of Adam, that same sentence fell upon every, every one of us. I mean, I'm telling you, I really appreciate what my Savior has done to redeem us. I really appreciate what Christ has done uh, to redeem us. Every one of us, was, we, we were headed, uh, headed to hell as a result of what Father Adam did. I thank God for Jesus. Now, physical death in the scripture. I want to show you this. Physical death, now I explain it, is the spirit of soul leaving the body. And I want to show you that scripturally. Uh, in, first, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses uh, 14, Peter wrote, uh, talking about him, his departure, he says, knowing that shortly, look what he said, I must put off this tabernacle or his body, even as the Lord Jesus Christ have shown me. Uh, Peter knew that he was about to die, and he said, I must put off my tabernacle. In other words, I'm going to die, and I'm going to leave this body behind. That's, that's, that's physical death. Look at this one. The book of Acts, chapter 5, verses uh, 5, 6, and 10, uh, this gives reference to Ananiah and Sapphira. Uh, this was a husband and wife duo that um, they, they, they planned a, a big offering and then they conspired later to do things different. And as a result, they died. Well, look what it says here. Um, the, the husband went in first and he died. And then I think the Bible says three hours later, his wife came to church. Now, why did both didn't go to church the first time? I, I don't understand that. But three hours later, uh, so his wife came in. And look what it says here. Then fell she down straightway. At his feet and yielded, yield up the ghost. And the young men came in and found her dead and carried her forth, buried her by her husband. So I'm showing you physical death in scripture. Her spirit and soul gave up. She gave up the, gave up the ghost. She, she, spirit and soul left her body and her physical body was left and they buried it. Okay. Give you another one here. Well, let me, get, let me, let me, let me, let me show you what, what our Savior has done. Jesus truly showed us his love. Uh, show, showed his love to us by allowing our sins to be placed on him. 
Because sin was not a part of his being, the only way Christ could experience death was because he was made to become sin for us on the cross. What love was expressed on that day when Jesus took our sins? Therefore, physical death was able uh, to touch him. Remember, Jesus told Pilate, no man take my life, but I lay it down. Think about this, saints. There was no sin in Jesus. There was none of Adam's blood in Jesus. So technically, he couldn't die. The only way the Savior died, our sins were literally placed on him at Calvary. Just like every Old Testament lamb, when the, when the high priest would, he would lay his hand, hand on the lamb and he would transfer all of national Israel's uh, sin onto the head of that lamb. And then they would slay the lamb once a year to give national atonement for Israel. The Bible said Christ, our Savior, he took that. He, he took our sins. And as a result, when our sins was placed on him at Calvary, what did he do? It was so amazing. At Calvary, when Jesus received the sin of humanity, God turned his face from him. And Jesus said, Father, why have thou forsaken me? Listen, saints, Jesus never experienced separation from God until our sins were literally placed on him. And Father God had to turn his face away from his son. And Jesus experienced separation from God for the first time. It was a, a direct result of sin. And at Calvary, our Savior, his love compelled him to go to that cross to take, take our sins. In the book of John, chapter 10, verse 15, he said, As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. Jesus said, uh, And lay down my life for the sheep. Jesus said, I'm going to die for the sheep. I'm going to let their sins be placed on me. I'm doing this for every one of you. You know, Jesus saw us in the future. Jesus died for every one of us. Our sins were placed on. Look at this one. Chapter 10, again, verse 11 through 18, it says, No man, he said, taketh it from me, but I lay it down uh, of myself. I have power to lay it down, Jesus said, and I have power to take it up again. He submitted himself to the will of God, and our sins were placed on him. And he was able to die. Second Corinthians, I love this one of my favorite verses, saints. Second Corinthians 5, 21, it says, For he have made him, God have made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. At Calvary, the Savior took our sins, and at Calvary, he gave us his righteousness. Saints, all we got to do is accept him. You know, if you, today if you hear on the sound of my voice, if you're not born again, all you got to do is accept what he did. Accept his death, burial, and resurrection, and you will have eternal life today. The, the, the stain of Adam's sin will, will be reversed, and you'll have, you'll have this, this righteousness that is of Christ uh, given to you freely. Well, because of Christ going to the cross, because of him taking our sins, uh, he was able to die, uh, die at the cross. Now, again, because what Christ has done, we have victory over death. And I really love this because our Savior, he died and he rose again. The Bible calls him the first begotten of the dead. I mean, he's the first one to, to rise eternally, never, ever to die again. And then he said, and after him, every man in his order. Christ left a powerful example for us that what's going to happen for the redeemed that die in Christ, we're going to rise just like he did. And we will rise forever for eternity. I really love this. Now, what happens to a Christian when they die? I got to give you scriptures on it. What happens to a Christian when they die? For a Christian, what happens at the point of death is different from those who are not born again. For the Christian, death today is only a passage into heaven. When a Christian dies, his body is buried, but his spirit and soul goes immediately to be with the Lord in heaven. I love that, saints. Saints, you know, if you die as a Christian, from, from, from here, you go straight into eternity. I love that. We, 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 go, we go from one world into an eternal world. I love that. And we'll see a little bit further here that it's different for those that are not born again. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6 and 8, he says, To be absent from the body is to be what, saints? Present with the Lord. I love that. For the Christian, death is not an end. Uh, it's a deliverance. Uh, we, for us, I mean, we go straight into the presence of God. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, you know, none of us ready to go right now. I mean, uh, if you ask me, Brother Perkins, are you ready to go right this minute? Uh, I'm ready to go, but I'm not ready to go. You understand what I'm saying? But, uh, but I'm, I'm ready. Amen. 
Look at this one. Philippians, look at this. Philippians chapter 1, the apostle Paul, he, he was caught in a, in a, in a, in a, Look, look what he said here, 23 through 26. He says, for I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Paul said, you know, it is best that I stay here with you. But, man, I'm so ready to go. I'm ready to give up this, this body and go and be with my Lord. He understood that there was coming a day that he, he would die and literally go into the presence of, of, uh, of the Lord. Look at this, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. Paul said, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep or those who have died, that ye saw or not, even as others which have no hope. Here, this is the text we find for the rapture. And Paul was telling his, his Christian brothers, I don't want you to sorrow like the world sorrow uh, after their death of their loved ones. Uh, he wants you to know that those of us that are born again, even our loved ones who have died in Christ, that at the time of the rapture, God is going to bring our loved ones with him. The spirit and soul of the redeemed will come back with Christ to reunite with their physical body, and then they will be raised, uh, glorified, eternal forever. Paul said, I don't want you to sorrow like the world. See, the Christian death, even though we miss our loved ones, I mean, that's, 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 that's true. Uh, I have a grandfather who died. I love my grandfather so much, but he died. But, you know, uh, I was so happy to find out that there's coming a day that I'm going to see him again because the Bible says he will be resurrected. You know, we have, uh, I have, I think, two, uh, we had two miscarriages uh, uh, early on in our marriage. And I got, I got some babies I'm going to see. Yeah, God's going, I'm, I'm going see to my, see my babies. Uh, I, I will see them again. So for the Christian, death is not the end. Look at this. You remember when Stephen was stoned to death? I love this episode here. This is the book of Acts, chapter 7, uh, verse 55 through, through 60. Uh, he looked up into heaven. And the Bible says he saw Jesus standing up and he told Jesus, he said, receive my spirit. They were, they were throwing stones on, on, Steph, on Stephen, stoning him to death. And he looked up and saw Jesus and he said, receive my spirit. How many know, saints, by the time he saw Jesus, them stones meant nothing to him. He couldn't even feel them, man. I'm, about to, I'm going to Jesus, man. Come on, man. Pile them up on me. Load me up, brother. <laughs> Let me tell you, he understood where he was going. He understood where he was going. Revelation chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. Uh, this talks about the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. During the first half of the great tribulation, there would be uh, uh, people that would actually get, uh, get saved during the tribulation and that would actually die for the word of their testimony. And the Bible shows them here in chapter 6, they are in heaven. The Bible said they're in heaven and they are remembering what happened on planet Earth. They said, God, how long will it be before you avenge us of our blood? avenge our blood of those on earth that slain us. The scripture says white robes were given them and God told them to rest for a little season until their fellow brethren that should be killed as they were. Uh, what we see here, death for a Christian is different. It's different. Many have taught that when a Christian dies, they go to purgatory to await a final decision of where they would spend eternity. This erroneous teaching is far from the truth. If you are a Christian at the point of death, your spirit and soul will go to uh, your spirit and soul will go to heaven to await the resurrection of your body. But for those who are not saved, death will mean a horrible end for them. The false teaching of purgatory was never a part of God's plan uh, to redeem mankind. Uh, that's a false hope. I don't know because Bible says, "Absent from the dead, I'm absent from the body, present with the Lord." Uh, when a Christian dies, immediately you go into the presence of God. Now, we're going to see on the other side what happens to an unredeemed person because it's also immediate for them too. What happens to the unbeliever when he dies? At the death of an unbeliever, the spirit and soul leaves his body uh, and, and is ushered immediately to hell or Sheol or Hades, the Greek or Hebrew form of the word. The body is buried but his spirit and soul goes, uh, goes on living in hell until the resurrection of his flesh at the last judgment. Some have taught that many just go on into soul sleep while others cease to exist. The spirit and soul of man never ceases to exist. Listen, saints, we are eternal beings. When God made us, you, he made eternal beings. We will never, ever experience uh, a cease of existence. That won't happen. We are an eternal life, spirit, soul, and flesh. And all death does is touch the body 
and it, it, it causes the spirit and soul to leave the body. But that's coming a day where the spirit and soul will come back into the body. Uh, the Bible is quite clear. We're going to see it here as we go further here. Now, I'm going to give you some examples here of this, uh, what happens to an unredeemed person when they die. Uh, Luke 16 is a wonderful, wonderful account. Uh, Jesus gave the account of the rich man and Lazarus dying. At, uh, uh, dying. And uh, some have tried to say Luke 16 was a parable. Uh, but uh, this whole account, Jesus, he, he's, he's mentioning names here. He's talking about Abraham, uh, Moses, and the prophets. Uh, these are not, this is not a fictitious parable. This is a literal account of a man going to hell. Well, here in Luke 16, the Bible talks about the rich man. It says the rich man also died and was buried. And the Bible says, and in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. Now, the Bible says he died, he was buried, that's the flesh, but his spirit and soul was immediately somewhere else. He was immediately in torments, the Bible said. And again, uh, this, this is a reality that we must understand. Uh, uh, this, is, this is very, very real. Uh, people are dying every day. Uh, we must understand this. In the book of Numbers, chapter 16, verses 29 through 33, the Bible uh, said that God did a new thing. Uh, Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, these men came up against Moses. They challenged Moses' authority. And Moses said, okay, uh, uh, if I'm a prophet of God, uh, if I've done this of myself, then you men will die a normal death. He said, but if, I didn't, if, 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 if I've done this and, this, and, it, and it is of the Lord, he said, today God's going to do a new thing. And what happened, you read the account here. This, this is an amazing passage here. God opened up the earth and Kor, Dathan, Abiram, their family, their cattle, their houses, everything fell straight to the pit. They went straight to hell. They went straight there. Yeah, this is a reality, man. I mean, it's, it's dangerous for the unbeliever. That's why I, I warn people, listen, man, don't play with it. Uh, uh, receive Christ today. In the book of Acts, chapter 12, verses uh, 21 through 23, uh, we hear this story about Herod, King Herod. The Bible said King Herod, he made a great oration that day, but the Bible says he didn't give glory to God. The people said it was a voice of an angel. And the Bible said that he didn't, he didn't give glory to God. And what happened, the scripture says that an angel of the Lord smote him. Look at this. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory and he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. This was King Herod. He died immediately, gave up the ghost. His, his body was in the earth, spirit and soul left his flesh. That's death for the unbeliever. For the sinner without God, death is a one-way ticket to eternal damnation. As man crosses death's door without the blood of Jesus on him, he goes into eternity on his own merits and works. Listen, listen. You don't want to go uh, into eternity on your own merits. Listen, saints, I'm going to heaven, but you know why I'm going to heaven? Because what he did. Saints, none of us can live good enough to go to heaven. That's why Jesus died. That's why Jesus went to the cross. I'm so grateful for that. But I'm going to tell you something. If you're trying to live a good life outside of Christ, you're going to find yourself uh, coming up short. This is, why, this is one reason why Jesus went to Calvary and died. He died because he knew that we couldn't redeem ourselves. And I thank God for it. In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 8, look what it says. There is no man that have power over the spirit to retain the spirit. Neither have he power in the day of death. And there is no discharge in that war. Neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. You know, it's amazing to me. I watch these scientists. They try to figure out ways to preserve life. Some people have actually fr frozen their bodies, you know. I mean, they got their bodies frozen. I mean, some very wealthy people have their bodies frozen, man. They're waiting for the day when man has figured out how to, how to rid the world of death. And then they go unfreeze them and they're going to have life for eternity. No, wrong, won't happen. Won't happen. No, no, this, this, this thing is bigger than man. Got to understand that. Ecclesiastes, look at this one, chapter 9, verse 1 through 3. He said, this is an evil among all things that are done under the sun, that there is one event unto all. Yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full, it is full of evil and madness and in, in their heart while they live, and after that, they go to the dead. In, in other words, men live their life to the full, but they live it in, in full sin. You know, 
the old commercial, take all the gusto out of life. No, don't take all the gusto out of life. Get, get saved. <laughs> get Jesus Christ. You take the gusto out of life and you may wind up in eternity damned. You got to hear it. This is the reality. I was on a plane flying this man. Oh, this guy, this guy, he was irate. This guy challenged me every, every part of the way. And I said, Lord, give me, give me a word to reach this man. And God gave me this about death. I said, sir, let me ask you something. I said, do you have a, is there anybody close to you that have died? He said, as a matter of fact, my best friend just died. I said, let me ask you something. I said, where is your best friend right now? I said, now you guys buried him. His spirit and soul left his body. I said, he went somewhere. Oh, man, it was a sobering thought for him. He didn't think about, wait a minute. Yeah, we did bury him. And the guy that I used to know left his body. Very sobering thought. I said, Lord, thank you for that one, God. God dropped a heavy on him, man. Boom. <laughs> oh, I loved it, man. We're almost done. The end result of both. Now look at this picture. We took this picture, in, I think we we're in Virginia or Washington. Uh, this is a sculpture of a resurrection guy coming out of the earth. Uh, this is the resurrection of both, and I'm going to show you what happens uh, to both. Uh, in, in, in the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verse 28, Jesus said something that was so powerful. He said, marvel not at this. He said, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave. Listen to this, saints. All, A-L-L, -L, that's everybody. All that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, that's the redeemed. Those that have, have been obedient to, the, uh, 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 to, to redemption's call. Then he said, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Listen, saints, everybody's going to come out of the grave one day. Be it righteous and be it the unrighteous. You want to make sure you are the redeemed. You are come out of the graves. The scriptures teach what happens to both Christian and unbeliever at the time of death. For the Christian, death loses its grip for all eternity, but for the unredeemed, they go on to their final punishment called the second death or the lake of fire. Death cannot hold the Christian because he has been redeemed from death by the blood of Christ. And I love this, saints. In 1 Corinthians 15, uh, Paul talked about in verse 54 that we've been delivered. Uh, uh, death has been swallowed up in victory. I love that. Verse 55, it says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Listen, saints, for the redeemed, death is not the end. Uh, death is not, death, death is not, a, uh, is not an end all for the redeemed. Listen, saints, we, we're going to heaven. We're going to spend eternity with God, and we won't stay there. We'll be resurrected and glorified back in our flesh again. This is for the redeemed. Death, on the other hand, for the unredeemed, will be just the beginning of their condemnation. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 through, uh, uh, through 15, talks about the great white throne. And John says, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the dead, uh, they were judged by God. He's talking about spirit, people that were spiritually dead. They're going to stand before God. God's going to resurrect the sinner, the unredeemed, at the end, at the last judgment. They will be resurrected. They're going to stand before God in their flesh. And he's going to judge the dead, the Bible says. They are still spiritually bankrupt. They're spiritually dead because they didn't accept Jesus Christ. They're not born again. They still have the stain of Father Adam's sin on them. Listen, saints, this is one reason why there'll be a lot of good people in hell. Good people. They don't steal. They don't kill. They don't smoke. They don't drink. They don't do a lot of things that we consider sin, but they have a problem with Jesus. And as a result of having a problem with Jesus, you don't have uh, that sin, the stain of Adam dealt with. We're almost done. Got three questions I want to answer for you. Number one, is there such a thing as soul sleep after death? Now, Jesus talked about uh, the young lady he raised from the dead. He says she sleeps and the people laughed at him. And his disciples, what do you mean? Jesus, this woman dead. Jesus went and raised her from the dead because he's a resurrection to life. Listen, there's really no soul sleep. As I share with you here, for the, for the Christian, you go into heaven. For the unredeemed, they go into hell. And they both are wide awake and alive. You read Luke 16, the rich man, when he went there. Now, he didn't go to hell because he was rich. He went to hell because he didn't repent. But when he was there, he had full memory of his life. 
and in hell that man had compassion. He said, send, send Lazarus back that he may, he may tell my brothers lest they come to this place of torment. The guy had compassion in hell. You know, I was sharing the other day, you know, you know, in hell, hell, hell is amazing. There are no atheists in hell. There are no, um, no unbelievers in hell. Hell has a, hell fixes everything. You know what I mean? But it's too late. Here's another question. Can we talk to the dead by going to the psychic? The answer is absolutely not. When a person goes to a psychic and they think they're talking to their dead loved ones, you're not talking to your loved ones. You're talking to a familiar spirit. The scripture warns for, 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 the, for, the, for, the, for the Christian, for the unredeemed, do not go to the psychic. The Bible says, lest you defile your spirit. No, you don't, you, you're not talking to your loved one. A familiar spirit is, is a spirit. Now, a familiar spirits, they travel with generations, with families. They know history. They know everything. And these mediums are dealing with these spirits. And, you know, people watch the TV. They got this one lady now, Long Island medium. People love it, man. Why are you going to watch some stuff like that? This woman is, is using a, a, a divination. That's a foul spirit that she's, that, that she's, a, that she's using uh, to tell people about themselves. And people are just so amazed. Wow, how she know all this stuff? Wow, woo. No. The Apostle Paul, I'm going to share this. I'm almost done. The Apostle Paul, uh, as he was traveling through the coast, the Bible said there was a young lady. King James says there was a young damsel. She followed the Apostle Paul. She said, this man is going to tell us about, about, about God. This man is going to show us the way to God. And the scripture said that as Paul was traveling, this lady kept following him. And the scripture says that it vexed his spirit. Now, listen, saying what she was saying was good. She said, this man is going to show us the way. But the Bible says it vexed his spirit. The Bible said that the Apostle Paul turned and he rebuked the spirit and cast that spirit of divination out of her. This lady was no longer a psychic after the apostle cast that foul spirit out of her. The Bible said that she brought her, her, her boss as much gain with her psychic ability, and they had to run Paul out of town because he shut down the business. <laughs> Listen, saints, we don't go to the psychic. No, no, they're not talking to your dead loved ones. No, they, they cannot. God would not allow that. Here's the last question I want to answer for you. Is it wrong to be cremated? I get this question everywhere I go. The answer is no. You know, cremation does not affect the resurrection. It does not. You know, Job said in uh, Job 19, he said, though worms destroy this body, he says, yet in my flesh shall I see God. See, all cremation does is take you back to the dust or to the ashes. Uh, what about a Christian who dies in a house fire? You know, they had a burial plant all, all set up and had a nice cough, uh, coffin already laid out, you know, a nice, nice trim gold and everything. They were ready to go that way, but they went in a house fire and they were cremated. Does that stop the resurrection power of God? No, absolutely not. Cremation does not stop the resurrection power of God. Now, as we close, I want to show you something here. Look at the screen. I'll show you some celebrities. This guy here, Christopher uh, uh, Hitchens, he died last year, uh, 2011. He was a noted uh, atheist. I think he died of cancer. This guy even mocked his cancer. He mocked God. This guy mocked the church. Tonight, he's in eternity. How many watched MASH? Uh, Harry Morgan died at 96. Uh, this is for the rappers out there, Heavy D. A uh, young man, he died. He went to the grocery store, came home, he, getting out of his car, unloading the grocery. grocery had a massive heart attack, died in his yard. Thomas Kincaid, the Christian, uh, Christian artist, died last year at 54. Mike Wallace died at age 93 last year. How many remember Whitney Houston? Tragic death, 48 years old. Uh, a woman had a voice. I believe God gave her a voice for the kingdom, not for the world. He gave her a voice. This woman tonight is in eternity. I mean, you know, J.R., who shot J.R.? Larry Hagman died uh, this year, 81. He died. Jean Stapleton died at age 90. She was part of um, another sitcom, uh, All in the Family. Tonight, she's in eternity. This year, Margaret Thatcher died at 87. She just died a few months ago, a month or so ago. Junior Seau, 43, died under suicide. Tragic. Jack Clubman, age 90, he died. For you sports guys, Paul Summerall died at 82. 
I like to show this when I talk about death because I want you to understand that these people had all types of life, all types of career. Uh, they were wealthy. They were successful. They had all different things in life. But tonight, this evening, they are in eternity. Tonight, they have a different perspective on life and death. Tonight, all of their wealth, celebrity, fame, fortune, houses, stuff means absolutely nothing. Let me tell you something. Listen, saints, you got to live your life today in light of eternity. You got to make decisions today in, in light of eternity. Because if, if the rapture uh, is prolonged, if it don't happen right away, I'm looking for the rapture, I'll be honest with you, I'm ready to go. But if it don't happen, every one of us will face death's door. And again, we got to be ready. Look at this one. Dr. George's uh, brother, she just died, 85 years old. George Jones, 81 years old, country, country uh, guy, wrote a lot of country songs, real famous, died this year. All his wealth and celebrity means nothing. Let me tell you some saints. The scripture says in Hebrews 9, 27, my last verse, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, and after this, the judgment. For the redeemed is the judgment seat of Christ. For the unredeemed, it's the great white throne judgment. But what happens is when you cross death's door, that judgment is set. But what's going to determine which one of those judgments you're going to be in is what you do today.